Okay, so this is my one take first drive review of the Renault Megane e -Tech Electric. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to the Late Break Show. So this is a French um, imported car, not quite out in the UK yet. They are still making the normal Megane. Um, so this is not a normal Megane E-Tech, this is an E-Tech electric, slightly complicated, but all you need to know is this is going to be made alongside the normal uh, Megane until 2024. This is an all new car. This has the CMF-EV um, underpinnings, which is the same underpinnings as the Nissan um, Aria. I reviewed that car, I'll put a link above for that car. This is the Nissan Renault Alliance. Now the first thing you need to know about this, while I'm waiting for a line of cars to join a motorway, uh, a main road, is that this car is actually dimensionally um, quite different to how you interpret it. When you see pictures of it, it looks very, very kind of big. It's not big. Um, it's actually lower than the Renault Zoe. Remember, this car builds on the Zoe's uh, legacy of of being a ground-up electric car. I know we're early to the game with, with their ZE range, zero emission range. This is a bigger car than the Zoe, lower roof. It's actually shorter than a Ford Focus. That's 4.2 meters long. Um, and it's got a, a 462 uh, litre boot. 440 what you see, and then there's a cubby hole beneath that's 22 litres. So bigger than the Zoe's 380. In fact, it might be bigger than a Golf. Renault have made a really good point of saying that this has a significantly lower centre of gravity than the Piston Megane, 90 millimetres lower, and it's an ultra slim battery pack. Now you can buy the Megane E-Tech Electric in two battery sizes, 40 kilowatt hours and 60 kilowatt hours. And this is the 60 kilowatt hour car and the 60 kilowatt hour gets more power 220 horsepower the battery cells are LG chem I believe the packs are assembled in France the car is made in France and the electric motor is designed and made in France okay which is always good this car's arch rival is the Volkswagen ID3 a car which a lot of people were excited about I certainly found it to be less exciting and possibly less plush, less cosseting inside than I would have liked. It's sort of visually cheaper. I think this car is strong. It feels premium. It feels premium here. We'll talk about that in a second. Go around that defender. Yes, yeah, so the battery pack is 110 millimeters thick and it is liquid cooled. So your two ranges then, 186 mile WLTP on the 40 kilowatt hour pack and 296 miles WLTP on this, the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, I've only driven this car for about five or six miles and I've been, I, I made sure it was 100% charged when I, left the house. It is a really impressively taut, comfortable, quiet car. You know what, it's so refined, it feels very refined. I've got it in comfort mode and there are some other drive modes and when we go out in a minute we'll find some uh, really nice um, country roads with some curves because I want to know if there's any Renault Sport DNA in the suspension. Multi-link rear suspension by the way. Five door only, you've got these nifty kind of aerodynamic door handles which come out and to greet you. And at the back it's concealed high up like Alfa Romeo's did ages ago and uh, in fact the Zoe has a similar system. But what a good looking car. I think it's a great looking car. It's got a high bonnet line which makes you think it's like a crossover type design but really it's just a hatchback. And um, 20 inch wheels on this particular model, big big rims. Um, push right out into each corner. 
So this version, the 60 kilowatt hour version with the more power, the 220 horsepower, I think the, the lower ranking car will probably get about a, a 130 horsepower, something like that, which will be 10 seconds to 62, which is quite slow. This is 7.4 seconds to 62. Renault say it's going to be about 30 grand starting price. Bearing in mind the ID3, from what I just checked, starts at 35. ID3 has multiple battery pack sizes as well. Uh, 45, 58 and 77 kilowatt hours. Um, but yeah, it starts at 35. This car is going to be keenly priced. It really is aiming for that crown. Steering wheel is not circular, um, but it's very, very comfortable. I quite like its shape. Don't entirely know what shape you'd call that. Um, and it's showcasing this brand new, very nicely um, brushed silver Renault logo that's on the nose as well. Paddles here on the steering wheel for regen. There's four stages of regen. Yeah, left increases. There's a little logo down there. And again, you've got these two screens. Uh, this screen is angled towards the driver a bit more. This is 12.3 inch, I think. Um, the screen's going to be ever so slightly smaller on UK models according to Renault, and I don't know why. Sixteen hundred kilos in weight, or just a smidge over that, right, for the big battery car. That's over a hundred kilos less than the VW ID3. ID3 is rear wheel drive, this McGann is front wheel drive. And it's it's keen to the Renault's keen to point out that a lot of the materials in here, which I do think look incredible, are either from recycled or heavily recycled recyclable. It's a bit dark to talk about a car's end of life. Uh, when you're driving a brand new, not quite launched version, but Renault are keen to point that stuff out. I've tried to get multiple cameras set up to do this in real time. Uh, I haven't got along with this car. There isn't a right-hand drive one yet. But you know, on the, I think looks-wise, and even the dash-wise to a point, I'm, I'm thinking I prefer this to the Nissan Aria. I like the fact that the tablet is angled but integrated into the dash, not stuck on like the Mach E or the Tesla Y or so many others. Uh, you know, the ID range actually, they're doing it a bit. Okay, some corners. Now I've still got it set in comfort mode. There is eco mode and there's sport mode. It definitely feels light on its feet, which is wonderful. And the grip level is really impressive. And that centre of gravity, you can tell they've worked hard at that. The other thing they've worked hard at, which is Renault's always good at, is getting the damping right. Honestly, there are a lot of EVs which seem unnecessarily tight and crashy at the moment. This is not one of those. This car has vehicle-to-grid charge capability, uh, which is a bit odd seeing as sort of Nissan were the first people to kind of do it. And I believe the Aria doesn't have it. It's almost like Nissan are abandoning it just when people are starting to understand it. It's a bit odd. So I really like this. You've got you've got a you've got multiple consoles. You've got a rubberized one here, little plinth, which I've put my sunglasses on just for today. There's physical buttons which are not shared with other Renaults. Apparently, they're all new for things like the air conditioning, heating, um, fan, and stuff like that. And then you've got heated seats and heated steering wheel in a little sub menu here. The haptic feedback on the screen is really quite nice. I do like it actually, uh, and this has Google technology just like the current Zoe when it was tech lifted it thankfully uses um, Google connectivity and infotainment which works really well the charge port you know is not on the nose like the Zoe which is really handy you open the diamond and there's the charge port the charge port's actually on the front wing and I don't know why Renault have gone with that but they have that seems a slightly backward step. I love the sort of, I think they call it warm titanium kind of accents on the bodywork and those ultra slim headlights. And the back of the car is very, very chopped down. It seems like a, a good shaped car to be able to navigate and park. Um, and that boot is a decent size, although not a flat entry point. This is a pre-production car, Renault says, so this is not the finished version 
as such. But you know what? The finish of it seems fantastic. Fantastic. It really does. I think it's tasteful. I like the orientation of the controls. Got a column shift to put it into drive nowadays. A bit like a Mercedes, really. You still got the old school, seemingly old school volume control and stuff like that for the radio on here. Then you've got the button for sport mode. Then you've got a couple of other view options here on this screen, which I can press. But you know, the liquid cooled um, battery pack, and uh, I've got high hopes for. I always found with my long term test Zoe, which if you haven't seen the review of, I'll stick it um, on screen now. I always found it to be really impressive. Efficient car, slippery car. Um, just got on with the job, and even with the heating on, it didn't seem to harm its real world range too much. I'm really enjoying this. I think this pulls together nicely, this car. That good combination of roomy interior, not too big a car, not looking too pretentious, just not looking too fussy and damped. Well judged in the suspension department. Bravo, Renault. I like that. I'm changing around with these. I do like the feedback on the, the, the screen and it feels high quality. In fact, everything feels high quality. It probably feels higher quality than the Aria. Yeah, I think it does actually. I'm willing to say that. Charge wise, it'll charge DC rapid up to 130 kilowatts, which means. In 30 minutes, you can get 187 miles out of the Megane E-Tech Electric. I just want to call it the Megane Electrique. Now, this is not going to replace the Zoe. The Zoe's going to stay um, in production for a while yet. But remember, there's a Renault 5 coming. And the 5 is going to be very cool and probably going to use this platform, I'm guessing. The CMF-EV. Not EMF, the 90s band that I did really like. Uh, CMF. Yeah, so I uh, there's some. This is like a sort of lime wood veneer. I can't read it exactly, but it's some sort of um, wood veneer that wraps all the way around the top of the dashboard and goes down to the sides here and here. Now the the side windows, the windows at the back seem to sweep up quite high, like a lot of car designs did. I don't know whether that's going to be hard for little kids to be able to see out of. It's a genuine flat floor car because it's a new platform so you can see in the back there's no trans tunnel. This has got a, a console here, they haven't decided to open it up. And there's storage space in there. I've got some sound equipment in there, a little rubberized thing here. In fact, this is the key, pretty much the same key that Renault have been using for years, a sort of credit card style, but with the new Renault logo, which this car showcases. Renault design's looking good at the moment. I have to say, I really like Renault design. They're doing great stuff. I think all that's left to say is that um, from what I can see so far, I'm just going into the village here, you can you can do your oh here it is, here it is. My driving eco data. I've been just driving it a combination of sort of like slow and few little accelerations averaging 16.9 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers yeah and you can do all that kind of stuff the google um setup for for finding new charges and decent information i've always found to be very very good what do you think about this it's refreshing i think that they're not trying to do a crossover an suv thing they're just going do you know what i'm going to make a really decent premium feeling round up new hatchback and we're going to sell it alongside our existing McGann hatchback even though it doesn't look the same it's one of the best looking car EVs out there and I think it feels like a joy to drive in fact the ride is almost up there with the Citroen EC4 which it has a wonderful wonderful magic carpet ride this promises to be nearly a 300 mile car uh, in the 60 kilowatt hour, which I think is is half decent and keenly priced. So first impressions then on this one take video, which I've never done before, it's a bit daunting, I've got to say, especially when I'm self-filming it, is 
So far, so very good for the Megane. Goes on sale in Britain in June with a special launch edition, then July, the less special editions, I guess. Um, I reckon for the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, you're gonna be probably looking at, what, 33, 34 grand? Anyway, if you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, please subscribe. Maybe you want to become a Patreon and support us that way. You'll get videos like this. You'll get to see them earlier than everybody else. Um, and I'm gonna put my playlist above while I'm at this junction for all of the EVs. We typically do 50% EVs on this channel. Thank you and goodbye.